audiences only. Some viewers might find this disturbing. Catherine Erin Corzelius was born on October 5th, 1989 in Travis County, Texas to parents Nancy and Paul Corzelius. Fun fact, Catherine's dad Paul was John Bon Jovi's manager. Catherine's family lived in a small, upper middle class neighborhood near the city of Austin, Texas. On a hot, sunny day in Texas, August 7th, 1986, Catherine, her mother Nancy, and Catherine's older brother, nine-year-old Chris, went out to run some errands. It was Paul's birthday, so the family went out to buy a birthday gift for their dad. The family stopped by their neighborhood mailbox on the way home. Catherine asked her mother if she could walk home, which was just a few houses down. Sure, her mother responded. Their home was only less than a quarter mile and Catherine was familiar with this route. Allegedly, Catherine took the short way and Nancy took the long route home. When Catherine failed to make it home, Chris went looking for her. He returned home without her, stating he could not find her. Fifteen minutes after Catherine was last seen alive, this poor baby was found face down in a fetal position. She was unconscious, but still breathing. They found her on the opposite side of the cul-de-sac. Nancy was confused on what to do. She knew she was not supposed to move an injured person, but she insisted on removing Catherine from the scorching hot pavement. Nancy placed her daughter in the car and drove 25 minutes to Sutton Medical Center. Catherine's father, Paul, was on his way to the medical center as he was in New York City during this time. Sutton medical staff discovered she had a fractured skull. She was placed on a ventilator to control her breathing, but unfortunately was already brain dead. Six-year-old Catherine Corsilius passed away at 11.30 p.m. One hour later, her father would finally reach the medical center. Upon investigation where Catherine was found, there was speculation that she may have been involved in a hit and run. Investigators did not find any debris or skid marks on the road that would lead them into believing this was a hit and run incident. Neighbors were questioned and they did not hear or see anything of a crash. Due to the angle of the road, it would be very easy to spot a child and slow down in time in an event of an unintentional crash. When medical examiners examined Catherine's body, it was determined that her injuries were not consistent with someone being struck by a vehicle. Her injuries displayed someone that jumped from a moving vehicle or was pushed or thrown from a moving vehicle. There were many theories involving this case. The first theory is that Catherine was being silly and wanted to do something called car surfing. Car surfing, also known as vehicle surfing or ghost riding, is when someone dangerously rides on the back or the hood of a moving vehicle. This reckless behavior is extremely hazardous and can lead to severe injuries or fatalities. So please do not try this at home. Catherine could have possibly hopped on the back of the family car to surf, and upon them going around the cul-de-sac, she could have fallen off. This would explain why she was found on the opposite side of the cul-de-sac. Unfortunately for Nancy, this could possibly mean that she was partially responsible for the injuries on her daughter that ended up leading to her death. Private investigator Barbara O'Brien possesses evidence that contradicts this theory. Firstly, the car was too hot for anyone, let alone a six-year-old, to grab onto. Additionally, Catherine had a splint on her broken thumb when she passed away, making it nearly impossible for her to grip anything. A second, more ominous theory that weaved into the minds of the Griselius family is the haunting possibility that Catherine had been abducted and met a tragic end. In a search led by a canine unit that led them into a vacant lot just 30 yards away from the mailboxes. A potentially crucial location.
investigation in unraveling this dark mystery. The dogs eagerly picked up Catherine's scent, a telling clue emerged, hinting that she had initially embarked on her usual route. Yet the trail abruptly vanished, leaving a chilling void that suggested the sinister path her abductor might have taken. Nancy is convinced with the unimaginable. She couldn't shake the belief that her daughter was placed on the pavement purposely. The stage would look like a hit and run. Catherine's hair was meticulously smoothed down, her shirt and shorts neatly arranged. Even her sandals clung to her feet and her toes pointed straight ahead. Adding to the abduction theory is that Catherine could have been abducted. And on her way out of the neighborhood, Catherine had found the perfect opportunity to jump from her abductor's vehicle. As leads and evidence prove the puzzling truth of what happened to Catherine Cordelius, flyers that once adorned Catherine's radiant smile were taken down. Paul Cordelius clung desperately at the entrance to Rob Roy by the lake near a memorial tree in black. Following her passing, Catherine played a crucial role in saving lives through the generous donation of her organs. In a heartfelt tribute to her memory, a mural was crafted in her elementary school cafeteria, and neighbors planted a tree adorned with the plaque in her honor. John Bon Jovi composed the song August 7th, 415, as a tribute to Catherine, memorializing her impact and legacy. Christopher Scott Cresilius, who was Catherine's older brother, was nine years old at that time and went on to become Travis County Sheriff's senior deputy. Chris graduated from West Lake High School and received his Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice at Texas State University. Afterwards, he graduated from Capital Area Council of Government's Law Enforcement Academy. Unfortunately, he died on March 18, 2020 in a car crash at just 32 years old. I feel bad for their parents, Nancy and Paul, for losing both of their children. I pray Catherine and Chris are reunited in heaven.